Hey everybody, it's Keith with the Elwood Automotive Training Channel, and today we have another one where I might need your guys' help. Um, this video may come out after it's fixed, it just kind of depends how the dealer does this person. I typically don't, like, you guys have seen the last couple videos, I call people out, but only after they've done something really terrible, and they don't help. So, we got Miss W here, she's got a 2013 Kia Sorento. Uh, it was at the local Midtown Kia, Midtown Kia Tulsa dealer, and uh, the car came in, and Miss Miss W said, "Hey, uh, the car, I, I went and had an oil change and some other work done. They were waiting on a part. It was all done under her extended warranty, which is a third-party insurance company who were uh, that that's semi involved in the situation. Not really, not not really involved actually at all." Anyways, after the repairs, uh, a couple days later, it started um, bucking and missing or running bad, and then it would stalled on me. I took it back to, to the Midtown Kia, and she said they looked at the car, they said she needed an engine, and then um, that they wouldn't work with her, her warranty company, warranty company, it's actually an insurance policy. She wouldn't work with, the, they wouldn't work with them, so they sent her to us. Now, I appreciate whoever works over there at Midtown Kia that sent this customer to us. Thank you very much. We appreciate the referral. Uh, we do do some of the we do some of the best work here in town. We try to use the best quality parts and do repair the best we can. And mistakes do happen. I totally get that. So this video coming out is wholly dependent upon how they react to this and how uh, how willing they are to help Miss W. So we get the car in here and we estimate the the engine re the engine replacement and then but we always say hey we're not going to replace that or do any of that work until we diagnose the concern ourselves to confirm that is going to fix it because we're going to stand behind our repair if we say this fixes the car we're that's what fixes the car or you don't pay so if i tell you you need an engine for your 2013 kia sorento and i put an engine in that car and it doesn't fix the concern that i said that it will fix then you will not pay for that engine that's how it works um because we're confident in our testing and analysis, and that's why we charge for the testing analysis, so we can do that. Um, that's where all the tooling and equipment comes from. So uh, she says, yes, please check it out, and then will you work with our in insurance? I said, absolutely, I'll work with them. Um, it's kind of a pain to work with those people sometimes. We laid out how the situation usually goes for Miss W, and she agreed and understood it would take longer working with them, and here we are. So we get the car in, we take a look at it, uh, looking at data, it sure enough definitely has a misfire uh, intermittently. Uh, but it doesn't run perfect all the time, so there's just some cylinder six misfires intermittently here and there on data. So we get the car in, we determine that based on fuel trim data um, and ignition data, what we're looking at, current ramping and everything, this is most likely a mechanical issue because we can see it in engine vacuum that there's a concern. So we move to an in-cylinder pressure. So we put the in-cylinder pressure transducer in, which is basically uh, using our Pico oscilloscope here. Uh, we use the WPS 500X pressure transducer, put that inside the cylinder in place of the spark plug so we can see pressure as a voltage. When we do that, what we're looking at here is a compression peak and then a uh, vacuum pull and then our exhaust plateau because our exhaust valve is open even though our piston's coming back up here. So there's no pressure built because the exhaust valve's open. Then we go to our intake and then we go straight back to compression. Now you see we have compression, compression, lack of compression interesting intake movement or interesting movement of of almost no pressure being made this this plateau of exhaust is typically atmospheric pressure everything below it is usually vacuum everything above it should be pressure that's how it should work uh, we have no compression here but we have valve movement we can see exhaust valve movement and moving from intake or moving from vacuum to to uh, atmospheric we see a small pressure build and then back to building compression with a maximum of about 111.3 psi so Anytime, without going into a full lesson here, what I see is some kind of lack of intake valve movement slash intake valve being hung open intermittently or, or something is causing intake valve issue. When there's an exhaust valve issue, we probably wouldn't see these plateaus, so we can kind of narrow that down. It is effect, The pressure change is affecting it. There's a bunch of other pieces that go into that puzzle, but we said, hey, there is an intake valve not opening slash not closing intermittently when it shouldn't. We should have this kind of waveform right here consistently all the way across almost identical in compression and everything we definitely have an issue so we opt for removal of the upper intake manifold to inspect for an obstruction or damage because this has an intake manifold runner um, valve assembly built in the lower intake manifold they have broken before we usually see a p200a for that um, so 
pull the uh, pull go to pull the upper intake manifold longer bolts that go here which are this style bolt a real long with uh, with thread at the end that goes through here that go into the lower intake manifold assembly uh, those two are both stripped out the basically these bolts were over tightened last time until the brass bushing that's made as an insert that stays inside the lower intake manifold those were seized together and it pulled the insert out of the lower intake manifold and stuck it in there you can see the one from the other bolt is still stuck in the upper intake manifold that should not be there that piece is made and designed to stay permanently forever into the lower intake manifold this one we attempt to get out you can see the pieces of where we tried to grab onto it with vice grips and and undo the bushing the bushing is stuck either cross-threaded or over tightened onto this bolt so tight it will not come off it should be much bigger than that but that's the plier holding it with pliers and trying to take it out it's stripped out this is what it's supposed to look like it's supposed to come out and leave the bushing inside the lower intake manifold like so the bushing stays in there and when you pull it out the bushing stays in the lower intake now we get that off and we go looking down cylinder six's intake manifold runner and we open the runner valve so we can see down in there. Let me grab a uh, flashlight. And we look down in there and uh, everything looks pretty normal except for one little problem. This piece was down in there sitting on top of the valve. I'll insert a picture here of what it looks like, what it looked like when we pulled it apart. So that's what we found. And if you look really close, I'll see if I can get it to focus on this. The ends of this are all beat up. And that's because it was actually banging around on there on top of the valve, intake valve, jumping around. Every once in a while, it would hang the intake valve open and then we'd let it close. That's the intermittent um, intake valve movement we were seeing. That was the cause. So this bushing is not the same as these or anything else. Where this bushing came from, we found that bushing goes right there. So at the tip of my flashlight, you see there's black plastic, then there's a strip, and then some more black plastic. That down in there, see if I can get my, my camera down there. That bushing right there, that's the bushing right there. Now, that actual bushing you're looking at is not the bushing we pulled out it's one just like it this bushing is from the original or the last lower intake manifold assembly that was on here this lower intake manifold assembly looks pretty new if you look at it and that's because it was just replaced by midtown kia talking to miss w she said she had this work done and it ran bad they said they need an engine and they wanted to buy the car back from her i don't believe this was an intentional act of nefariousness um, we offer to buy cars from people when they're not worth fixing for them sometimes too so i don't think that was an intentional act at all i don't think this i think this was just an accident the technician who he hasn't been given the opportunity to make this right so i won't name him but his name is on the invoice and paperwork i have the paperwork i just called midtown kia and talked to bobby the service manager and nate Nate seemed like a pretty nice guy. Bobby immediately said, we didn't put a lower intake manifold in that car. It's not on the invoice. Hi, thanks for calling Midtown Kia Service. How can I take care of you today? Hi, uh, my name's Keith. I uh, have a customer that got their vehicle worked on there. I'm trying to get a hold of the service manager. Uh, well, myself and the customer has been trying to contact for two days and we're just getting ignored. So I'd really like someone to get a hold of them and, and, and talk to them. Yeah, what's the information? Yeah. Uh, well, her car was in there 10-26-2023 uh, is when it left and it got a lower intake manifold assembly is installed. And then a uh, couple, some time later it started misfiring. She took it back to you guys. You said that it's going to need a motor and that you wouldn't work with the warranty company, so you guys sent her over here to us. My name's Keith, I own Level 1 Automotive here in town. So the, the car's over here, and we found uh, the bushing from the, from the original lower intake manifold assembly. When you guys removed it, it got dropped into the cylinder six intake, and it's been banging across the intake valve, causing a misfire. So it wasn't an engine, it was that. Um, been trying to get a hold of someone to see what, what can be done for this. 
Uh, but unfortunately, she's called and I've called and everyone's just said they'll have someone call you back and no one's called for three days. So That would be our scheduling department. We're actually working on getting rid of it, a third-party company. Okay. Uh, what's the name of the dealership or repair facility? I'm sorry. Level 1 Automotive. Level 1 Automotive. I'm writing down your number, and I already have Miss Walker's phone number in my system. Uh, if you're okay with waiting on a brief hold, let me see if I can get a hold of a manager. Yep. Hello, Bobby. Hi, Bobby. This is Keith at Level 1 Automotive. How you doing, sir? Good. So, did uh, he give you the rundown of what we're what we got? Kind of what you yeah, what you got. So one of the boostings on the, the shaft on the intake runner come to come out. Yeah, the lower intake, uh, the the one large brass bushing that sits on the on the um, passenger side rearward left of the lower intake manifold. Right, right. Uh, so yeah, we we came here for the misfire. You guys had sent her over here to us. Um, we found that the intake valve was intermittently being hung open, so went in for a visual inspection, um, then found that brass bushing, which is the same one that's in the lower intake, but the one on the new lower intake that's on the car isn't missing. So this one came from the from the last lower intake that was pulled off. Well, we did a BCM motor, was all we done to it. And a lower intake manifold. I've got the invoice where he put one on. Installed new intake runner manifold and erased codes. Took seven mile test drive vehicle runs to spec. That's from me. Wrote it himself on this invoice. Right, but the, the parts wise, if you look at the parts list, there's not a um, intake on it. There's a BCM motor, which is a valve that operates the linkage. Mm -hmm. I know what the BCM motor is. Um, so the car came in for that service and then left misfiring. And, and I mean, that that brass bushing is the same exact one that's in the lower intake manifold. I mean, it's got a new one on it. It's got a new lower intake manifold on it. And he wrote on the ticket that he installed a new intake manifold runner. Runner manifold, which that's part of the, the runner blades are part of the lower intake. The VCM motor just bolts on the left-hand side. Right. I mean, I just have to see it to, to totally get what you're trying to say, but. Okay. Uh, do, you, do you have a you have a copy of that RO the six zero eight nine three two eight? Yeah, that's what I was looking at, and it okay. shows me that the uh, I don't see the intake runner build out, so I'm not sure it came from here. Yeah, it says uh, so right below the three installed parts for the, right. the gasket, surge tank, inlet manifold, gasket, and motor module. It says installed new intake runner manifold and erase codes. No, no, I see the story. I just yeah. don't see the part. Okay. Okay. Would you like to see our, our inspection or? Yeah, do you want to send me the photos on it? Let yeah. me see what you're seeing. Send yep. me a shot of that intake too. Let yep. See yeah, I'll get determine it. what happened with that. So, I mean, the brass piece we pulled out of cylinder six is, is from that. Right, right. I get what you're saying. Yeah. I definitely understand the car. Yeah. You said, I mean, they don't put a several hundred dollar intake on a car without charging for it. Yeah, well, they, I, I don't know. This was the warranty work that you guys did through Car Shield, I assume. Or did you do it under... Extended warranty, yeah. Yeah. I know those guys like to send their own parts. Well, that's why, that's why I'm going to have the shop on me look it up, because I see his story. Mm-hmm. And I see my, my Car Shield correspondence is intake manifold and gaskets. That's what the labor was for removing a stall. Okay, who, 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 so I'm trying to get as much information because we've gotten no phone calls back or nothing for the last couple of days. So it's been without her car for quite a while. And I mean, we just got the car, so we just started figuring out what's going on with it. 
And so what does this look like? Because, um, I mean, at this point, considering it, if it was dropped in when you guys did the intake manifold. Right this late in the afternoon, it's not going to happen that quick. I've got to give it a shot for me. I need to determine where this intake is really came from. I don't have it here. Um, I'm looking up the bulletin now that you made reference to pertaining to this bulletin. So I, I get what you're saying. I understand yeah. her situation. But, again, we're talking at 452 on Friday. I lose him in eight minutes. Yeah. That's not going to be enough time to make a determination. And then uh, the two longer bolts that go in the upper intake plenum, those were over torqued to the point where when we went to go pull them out, the bushings in the lower intake manifold came out. Okay, definitely make that statement as well to me. Yeah, it's all, it's all in there. Yeah, I'm going to take pictures of the intake manifold. Uh, let me get... I'm going to pass you back to Nate right quick and grab his email address. I will be on deck tomorrow, so I'll be starting the process tomorrow to research it out. But If the technician turns out being a turd, which I hope he's not. I hope you're a great guy. I hope you're a great technician. And mistakes happen, and it happens. There's Things happen. You just take care of it. The technician wrote... Intake manifold and gaskets, VCM, driver's door lock actuator. And there's a parts and labor breakdown there with an authorization number. That's because this was used, she used her insurance policy, her third party insurance, not a, not a Kia warranty, but one, one of those ones they sell you. So the technician wrote that uh, there's a bulletin for 11 to 13 Sorrento, uh, Sorrentos uh, that exhibit a P200A. Okay, yeah, I probably should have read that before I started talking. Um, caused by an inoperative VCM actuator or an inoperative valve linkage inside the intake, which may exhibit a malfunction indicator lamp, DTC, whatever, after engine startup. It's caused by, and it goes in to repeat that, and it says, so installed new intake runner manifold and erased codes. So twice on here it's written down they installed the intake. Now, there are three parts listed on here, a VCM motor module, a inlet manifold gasket and a gasket tank surge gasket surge tank three of those I don't know what that is off to look up the part numbers uh, but the part number it's just weird because the way it's written anyways installed new intake runner manifold and erase codes took seven mile test drive vehicle runs to spec and then we go to the back sheet because they did some door lock actuator work too and it says, upon inspection of the, uh, oh, customer states after replacing the driver's side window, there's a noise. Oh, that's not it. Here it is. Customer states, CEL came on while driving it and has since turned off, since turned off. Please check and advise. And that's where this ends. I don't have a copy of their last RO in hand. Miss W has that. That states that they recommended an engine. Anyways, this brass bushing was dropped in during the repair. What I hope for, and I hope you guys would agree, that we expect to see Midtown Kia take responsibility and just pay for the repairs that are currently on the vehicle that we our diagnosis and analysis and our teardown and then at that point I'm okay if they do the rest of the repairs for her for free I would want that if, if 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 I made that mistake and it went to another shop and the other shop called me I would also say hey send it over to me and I'm I'll, I'll, I'll inspect the vehicle confirm what you're saying is true confirm that happened and they'll take care of it here's my concern this car is going to uh, leave here most likely and go to Midtown Kia and then they're probably gonna hopefully they don't come up with some kind of excuse of why it wasn't their fault so this video is here in case that happens so I will keep you guys posted with what's going on but if you see this video it's because they did exactly that and they're not willing to take responsibility it's pretty clear that the evidence is there we've got all the paperwork that says so the bushing that shows it it was one from the lower intake they said they took the lower intake off, and I'm sure it wasn't banging around in there for thousands of miles before that. And if it was, that technician would have seen it when they pulled the lower intake manifold. So, that's kind of where we're at. Alright guys, stay tuned for part deuce of seeing how this, uh, this Kia turns out. And uh, we can all hope that Miss W has a better time. Apparently this has been going on for uh, since October 27th when, when the car was done. It's been at back at Kia and then over to us for that entire time. And it is currently December the 29th, 2023. All right, hang on for part two, guys.